Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome back to, I think, part 13 of my Millenniavist campaign here in Suzerain. So let's check the news. Archaic state of conscription laws. Uh, the matter I'm writing about, of course, is mandatory military service. In times there are no active wars, do we still need these archaic conscription laws? Let me answer that. It is because someone profits from it. Not only does this make the warmongering solace happy, it also works out for large defense corporations. The oligarchs are now swimming in money while we still have to send our children away when they come of age. We are in the modern age. If we want to modernize Swordland and catch up to the superpowers, if we lose this militaristic identity so we can intellectually prosper, mandatory conscription laws need to go. You know, I hadn't even really thought about that, um, but I guess that's a good point. That is going to come up at some point if I'm going to do the conscription laws or let them stay or, or if we go modern. Now, I don't remember if it matters what the budget is when it comes to that. Um, because the whole thing is like, look, we can either spend the money paying for more troops or we spend the money modernizing our equipment or something like that. Um, so it's using existing money. Uh, I guess then what I'll do is, uh, yeah, we're going to get rid of the conscription laws then because that's what the radical wants and we're supposed to be going to the left. So that's what we'll do. Ah, we'll be meeting with some people soon. All right. What do we have here? Yes. United Contana offers aid. Very fun. The Foreign Minister of United Contana has offered a substantial amount of financial, logistical, and equipment support to help our country. In return, United Contana requests refuel and repair access to the Konriat naval base whenever they require. German Leon Milenev has sent personal assurances. This agreement is for peaceful purposes only. Now, uh, I think we already went over what United Contana is, but I guess let's... Uh, first off, we're going to accept it. Like This is a super easy decision, I would think. Um, yeah. Get that money, baby! Woo! All right. Oh, what's this? Military Contana visits, economy investments from United Contana, mini Conten, uh, Contenin state companies are opening new branches, expanding their existing operations, and forming shortage-based subsidiaries, bolstering our economy and creating opportunities for job and further investment. Woo! All right. That's what I like to see. Um. So. Um, I think what we're going to do now is, yeah, let's read, let's read about their leader. So this is the leader, Leon Malenyev of United Contana, which is somewhere here to the east off screen. Um, he's a Contanan revolutionary politician and political theorist who has been serving as head of government of United Contana since 1910. Under his administration, Contanan and then the wider United Contana became a communist state governed by the Kontanen Communist Party. Ideologically a communist, he developed a variant of Marcian or Markian socioeconomics known as Millenniavism. Born to a poor family in the Kontanian Empire, now in United Kontana, Millenniev embraced uh, revolutionary socialist politics following his brother's execution. He moved to Kiao in 1901 and became a senior theorist following Marcian socioeconomics. Inspired by Carlos Marcia's uh, political theory. He developed millennialism when he joined the Marxist. Mars, yeah, I'm going to say Mars. The Marxist Contanin Labor Party. He took a key role in the party's ideological split, leading the Rotsky faction against the rest of the factions and encouraging millennialism inside the party. He later campaigned for the Century of Revolutions to be transformed into a Contana wide proletarian revolution, which he believed would cause the overthrow of capitalism and its replacement with socialism. He led the Rotskys in the 1907 revolution and declared a communist republic by ousting the king. He became, <coughs> excuse me, he became famed for his uh, massive education and science plan that has raised his vast nation to technological supremacy in the region, contesting with Arcasia. He is He was responsible for leading United Contana to a period of rapid industrialization and collectivization through the execution of a command economy. And pursuing, um, and pursuing, oh, I lost my place. For a period of rapid, uh, th 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 pursuing socialist reforms that led to the development of the entire continent. His ideology has been developed and interpreted into different schools of thought in other parts of the world, while Marco Milenjevis keep growing in number, making Leon Milenjev one of the most influential leaders of the century. Okay. So that's who he is, and uh, he's going to be helping us out now, which is awesome. All right. Religious Harmony Bill. 
Uh, I think this is like one I'm gonna want to get rid of. I think this is like one of the NFPs bills. Um, so for the uh, religious harmony bill, for the purposes of increasing religious harmony and unity, the following laws are established in religious affairs. Section 1 of the RHB will ensure that the Day of Dissension Ceremony in the Ark Sanctuary of Dyer shall from now on only hold sermons in the Swordish language. Section 2 will forbid sanctuaries from holding sermons in Bloodish unless they receive approval from the Archpriest of Swordland. Section 3 will enforce that all priests applying to be state sanctioned have Swordish descendants to be able to receive their salaries and pensions. Yeah, obviously... Um, we're going to, uh, you know, veto this. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't even have any benefit, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's kind of, I think that's mostly just a role-playing bill, you know? I uh, vetoed the religious harmony bill. Uh, President Rain protects religious freedoms. He was recently vetoed by the outrageous, he's recently vetoed the outrageous religious harmony bill. The bill was aiming to limit the freedoms of bloodish people in Swordland. The MP to propose this bill was, of course... Kezaro Kibiner, the leader of NFP himself. Mr. Kibiner has never stopped his attacks on bloodish people, and we are sure that he will continue his racist onslaught and his attempts to further divide the country. President Rain's decision to veto this discriminatory bill, which was a clear attack on religious and personal freedom. <laughs> Whoa, excuse me. A clear attack on religious and personal freedoms will be welcomed by bloods and swords alike. Very nice. Okay, next up, uh, condemnation for Marquesia because I did a financial deal. President Walker is going to do whatever it takes to defend the sphere from the encroaching threat of millennialism. Yeah, whatever. We don't care about that country because we're not aligning with them. The Ministry of Health is discussing privatization. I don't think we're going to be doing that. Okay, a call from Gus Manger. Ooh, I think we're, our investment's about to pay off. I was sipping my first cup of coffee for the day when the phone lang up, lit up and rang like this. Mr. President, how are you doing this fine day, if I may ask? What is it, Gus? I am calling you because I received a call from the CEO of Armandine Industries, Aaron Bridges, about the recent initial public offering on the Ventry City Stock Exchange. As you might have guessed, it's about our significant venture investment of 2,000 shares worth nearly 2 million ren. I am very pleased to say that we have made gains. The shares have doubled in price at the IPO and the VCSE, and we will soon receive the profits made from the investment. Isn't that great? Uh, yes, it's great. Go on. You will love it. In total, we have made nearly 3 million swordish yen. It was risky, yes, but look at where we are now. Some things are just worth taking the risk for. Exactly. Electronics manufacturing has a great future, and Armandine seems to have a head start. I assure you, this will pale in comparison to what we will do together in the future. The money will be transferred to your personal bank account shortly. Uh, let's see. Very well. Talk to you later, then. Goodbye for now. <laughs> hey, we got the money. <laughs> All right. Uh, Armandine stocks jump to nearly double, and that's what we call season the means of production, baby. All right, what do we got here? Uh, private party at the Gentleman's Club, or we could do a briefing on the status of immigration regulation. Let's do that before we go party. I don't think so, Mr. Whiskey. It doesn't make any sense to me that a foreign citizen should come for a Swordish citizen in Shortland. Uh, yeah. Immigrants are the reason are... Okay, so they're arguing about what are we going to do about immigrants. Whiskey says, Immigrants are the reason our economy is not completely unsalvageable. Look at Agnolian immigrants in England. They have revitalized the whole region and in turn boosted the economy of the entire country. Simon can attest to that. 
Statistically speaking, allowing immigrants to become part of the workforce contributes to our economy. But I agree that the current situation is very nuanced. Uh, okay. I can't believe we're accepting financial aid from communists. What's next? Let the child murderer buy us lunch. Containing warships in Quantite. My father will be rolling in his grave. Uh, we need to be friendly with our potential allies. Allies, we don't come use or I don't. Well said, Miss Lancia. Gentlemen, can we please get back on topic? Anyway. Uh, look at the superpowers. Do you see them closing off their borders? Why do you think their economies are in such good shape? They're in their current state because they welcome immigration and use it to their advantage. Uh, I agree. We need to consider the economic impact of uh, immigration. Do you have any questions on immigration? No, let's just move on. Uh, yeah, we promised to keep our immigration laws react, which I think is the right court of action. I disagree. We're supposed to control and reduce the negative effects of immigration by crime and subversion. see your point, uh, Joseph, but the economy certainly benefits from more immigration. Internal order, on the other hand, suffers immensely. We should tighten the laws to prevent further chaos. Oh, this is going nowhere. Yeah, this is a simple one. We will keep our immigration laws relaxed. I'm glad you made the right choice. All right, um, the citizens of Swordland aren't forgotten. Our work for them continues. And now they will compete with foreign immigrants just to put food on their tables. I'm disappointed in you, Ryan. Anything else, Mr. President? I want everybody here to get used to the new changes. This is our new direction. I'm looking forward to the upcoming trade talks. Peter and I have been visiting Stalport and Raklauitz. In, uh, in preparation I'll be coming along to talk with the uh, uh, blah, 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 uh, economy minister looking forward to the potential partnership um, if you're finished I'm going to head off and get the ministry to work on the new policy same here our border units need to be informed and prepared keep up the good work everybody alright Country overview, order, streamlined immigration, we've closed loopholes, reduced legal migrants, and streamlined legal migration provinces. So the nationwide protests have been quelled thanks to our devoted efforts, and then in terms of diplomacy, we've got relaxed immigration. Financial aid was the answer to the recession. At times, sacrifices that need to be made for the greater good. This may appear as an issue at first, but a great leader knows better. It comes as no surprise that President Reyes decided to make a small sacrifice in return for helping Sorlin achieve prosperity once again. This has been only a logical outcome, and there's nothing left for us to do but to applaud President Reyes for his success in making Sorlin a better place. God, it's nice to have a friend in the media. Uh, Ministry of the Interior. Restructuring of the Ministry has been successful. Two major business rings of two crime families have been shut down. Several high-ranking members have been arrested with the implementation of the Witness Protection Program. The Swordish Police reports they are confident in limiting, limiting the sick crime families in the short future. Okay, next up. Uh, I'm starting to lose my focus. So, he's got a new venture, Gentleman's Club. It's a salon, not just for politicians and businessmen, but also for artists, entertainers, people of taste. No wives or girlfriends allowed. There's loud jazz music. Anton, finally, now the real party can start. Come on in. Mr. Anton Rain. Uh, thank you, Peter. What's next? Acquire a marching band? No, I'm saving those for your own funeral. For your funeral. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got some whiskey. We're celebrating life. Uh, I'll drink to that. People in the crowd laughed and raised their glasses. The tradition dictates as the club president, I have to remind you of our house rules. There are three. No politics, no wives, no one sober. Cheers! Sip your whiskey. 
I declare the party started. All right, so it's a really nice place. Chandelier, hedge maze. An 18th cent, oh, let's see, how are you paying for all of this? I'll let you in on a secret. Gus Manger has a lot of contacts in real estate. He brokered a good deal for me. He'll also be here tonight. I can introduce you if you like. Okay, that's just a weird sentence. He's my, he's my minister of agriculture and rural development. I've met him. Let's see, living in a lavish mansion while my country suffers is not for me. I understand completely. That's why I've donated 30% of my vice presidential salary to charities. That's nice of you. That's what it says on my tax forms, at least. God damn it, Peter. We continued walking until we circled back to where we had started. So, what do you think of my little hallway? Uh, frankly, I find it disgusting. That might be a... I don't know about that much. Uh, it's amazing, but I'd hardly call it a hideaway. More like a palace. It definitely doesn't rival yours. Anyway, let's get back to the party. But now here's the thing. I don't think I live in the Maroon Palace. I think that I just work there. Let me let me check that. Let's go to the Codex. Uh, no characters, ideologies, locations, cities. Or would it be like landmarks? Maroon Palace. Uh... Yeah, this is just where the work is done. But I don't live at the Maroon Palace. I arranged for some caviar to be brought from Lesbia. You're going to love it. Co cocktail uh, waitresses were carrying around plates of canapes, wearing dresses that left little to the imagination. I thought this was a gentlemen's club would you rather get served by wrinkly old man sweetheart come over here she was in her mid-twenties wearing lipstick her blonde hair neatly tied into a ponytail on her plate were toast points slathered in the lesbian caviar peter had mentioned i took a bite it was rich salty tasting of pure seaside i can almost hear the sound of waves and seagulls Lesbian caviar, best in the world. I'm telling you, Anton, there are few pleasures in life that are this. As the waitress uh, left to serve another attendee, she flashed a quick smile at Peter over her shoulder. He smiled back a little too broadly. Sensual. His eyes were still fixed on her with an expression from I, I, I remembered from our many nights out together as students. Oh, look, there's Gus. Why don't you go talk to him? I'll be back shortly. Uh... Peter, I'm warning you, don't make a mistake. Mistake? What are you talking about? I'm just going to the washroom. I'll be back before you know it. He left the room. Okay, so he's not going for the waitress. He left the room. Okay, so it's Gus Manger. Mr. President, a toast to our new member, everyone. Uh, I heard this mansion is a result of your connections. That's right. I have a wide network in real estate. Peter told me a couple of weeks ago you might be interested in potential opportunities such as, well, this. He opened his arms and gestured at our opulent surroundings. Let's take a walk. Took out two cigars and held one out for me. Sure. I took the cigar and started smoking it, mixed with the taste of whiskey. It was delicious. We went out to the balcony. All of El Lurie was at our feet. From this vantage point, I was able to see how expansive the building plot was. The swimming pool and hedge maze were visible from here. I know you're wondering about the deal Peter made. In a nutshell, thanks to my network, he was able to procure this house for half the asking price, which would have been impossible under any other circumstances. Uh, that cheap, huh? I would have been delighted to work with you, but unfortunately a deal wouldn't be possible at this time. Not for me or my contacts, at least. Why is that? There have been some issues with my business, Mr. Rain. Nothing life or death, but the hard work I put on the canceled railway took up so much of my time that I've had to postpone some projects. I'm sure you understand. Huh. I understand. Okay. If you'll excuse me now, I will go refresh my drink. See you around. I saw a silhouette. Oh, so I thought he was going to offer me... Okay, interesting. So he he's in favor of the railroad. Yeah, because there's an achievement. Because he offers you two investment opportunities: you can either invest in a winery or you can invest in a in a football club, and uh, you get an achievement for each of them. And, and I think I did the winery before. But I was thinking about doing the football club for the, um, you know, to get the other achievement. But uh, I guess it's only if the railway gets made. Oh well. 
So two people are kissing. And the head's mage. An hour later, Peter showed up next to me. See, I told you I'd be back before you knew it. It's been an hour. Where were you? I told you I was in the washroom. Why? Around the same time you were gone, I saw two people kissing in the head's mage. Horny kitchen staff, eh? What do I even pay him for? You know you can tell me anything. Hey, you can have her if you want her. Anyway, want a drink? Because I do. We drank and drank, just like all times. I woke up the next day with a pounding headache and more than a few regrets. My memories of the evening were hazy, but there was one important detail that kept coming back to me. The red lipstick on Peter's collar. But maybe my memory was playing tricks on me. <sighs> Peter, Peter. I give you chance after chance and you fuck it all up. All right. What's the news today? President Rain saves the day. Uh, so they're praising that I vetoed the bill. Every blood should be grateful for the exemplary decision by the president. Political violence in the old capital. Uh, police, after the arrest of the vice president of the Young Swords Cultural Center, a group of teenagers started protesting in front of the Erlery Police Department, shouting police are fighting for the wrong side. Uh, we pose no... What the F? Okay. We or our cultural organization pose no threat to the national security of Swordland or to any other foreign country or state, a protester said, waving a flag of the Kingdom of Swordland. Hmm. We have not and do not plan on engaging in acts of terror or violence. You're waving the flag that's not even our republic. Bah. Let's see. Except financial aid for United Quintana. Uh, okay, this might be a boost. The real motive's unclear. Signaling a potential alliance. Alright, what's next? The opening of the Benfi Festival. Very nice, very nice. So this is Curtin Lesty, who's basically, you know, the big rising star. Um, cultural salvation event. Film screenings, concerts, theater, dance performances, art exhibitions. Celebrity studded nightly galas. The opening ceremonies were broadcast on TV and watched by millions. As the car slowed, a courtier of reporters and security guards rushed to meet us. I turned my attention to Monica. Since Gloria had convinced me to cancel her opening speech, things between us had been strange. She barely said a word to me all day. Will you ever... Just gotta get through this. Will you ever forgive me? I told you my reasons. I know and I understand. It's just going to take some time. I'm going to find my seat. Um, okay. W let's see. What voice do I want to give this guy? I don't know. Who cares? Um, I think this is his only scene anyway. Welcome to the first day of the Benfi Festival. Look away. This is a night for the people of Benfi, indeed for the people of Swordland to put aside their differences and come together in celebration. Yet as we unite for the festivities, we must remember the real reason we are here. This festival was founded around the principles of our cherished religion, Nurity, yet over the years it has been severed from its sacred roots and become something else, something more perverse. An excuse! For public drunkenness and grotesque displays of the flesh. An occasion for young women to parade their bodies and engage in lascivious behavior. That's a word that's not used enough. What the hell is he talking about? Lascivious behavior? What century does he think we live in? I don't... Uh, I don't know. Just let it be. She had frown on her face. Perversion hidden under the guise of art is not befitting the beautiful city of the... The crowd was becoming restless. Many of the younger attendees were murmuring in disagreement, while a few of the older ones were nodding vigorously. As I said, perversion hidden under the guise of art is not... Actually, let's do a quick timeout. So I once went to the... Super quick story. I once went to this uh, music festival that was taking place in a city. And it was really good, like, you know... Uh, they were usually pretty fast between getting the new the new singers and bands uh, uh, on stage, but 
there was a point where like the city council went up on the stage and they were like basically you know saying hey it's great to have you all here because there were people who traveled from like out of the country to go to this festival and um and then they're and then they're like you know they're sort of thanking the people and they're and, and whatnot and after a while though they were starting to get jeered because it was just like okay you thanked us for coming now get off the fucking stage so we can hear the music <laughs> so, um it's like even though you kind of helped organize this thing or whatever um anyway as i said so like i'm just thinking like because this is this this festival is his baby uh and Anyway, as I said, perversion under the guise of art is not bif enough. The hall fell silent. Monica rose and continued. Mr. Lesty, it is not young women who are disgraced to this fine festival, but you. You and your backwards puritanical attitudes, which have been holding this country back for far too long. Watch the events unfold. Monica turned to face the audience, speaking loud enough to be heard without a microphone. Women of Swordland, we must not let people like Mr. Lesty use religion as a justification to demean and oppress us. Our time has come. Uh, a few people rose and applauded. Curtain Lady Steve, I just think, I think Mrs. Rain has forgotten her place. What do you think my place is, Mr. Lesty? The kitchen? This festival is not about your retrograde traditions. We are living in modern times now. It's the current year. <laughs> and it isn't your place to decide how the people of Benfi, especially the women, should be celebrating their own festival. Good, good. I looked at the podium to see Curtin list these piercing gaze on me. There would surely be a price to pay for this. Mr. President, could you please control your wife? before she embarrasses herself any further. Hmm. Let's see. Monica, get back in your goddamn seat. Oh, we are, uh, we're de I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. We're definitely not doing that right there. Um. Uh. Um, no, you know what, Curtin? My what? But it's gonna isolate the USP. No. No. Yeah, we're doing this. You know what, Curtin? My wife is absolutely right. Monica looked at me, surprise registering on her face. Thank you, Anton. Why is she so surprised I'm supporting her? What the F? All right. Let's see here. Uh, now, pl uh, your task was to give an opening speech, not a moral lecture. Or no, no, let's go with a now. Please get your speech over with already. That's more dismissive, I think. Or she's like, nobody fucking cares. I will, Mr. President, if you'll allow it. He looked at me threateningly before continuing. He's looking at me threateningly. What are you going to do, bitch? You ain't going to do shit. Benfi has always been a beacon of culture, tradition, and religion. Many battles have been fought over this precious city. Army after army has tried to claim it for their own, but we fought back and won each time. We stand here thanks to the strong men who were able to protect their families, their lands, their way of living. Every day I praise God that we have succeeded so far. Scattered applause broke out from some of the uh, older members of the audience. I leaned over to Monica. I praise God he's only allowed to speak for another two minutes. Monica stifled a short laugh. Yet the traditions that form the very fabric of our society are being tested, even as I speak. He looked pointedly at Monica. We must stay true to our values so that swordlet can prevail. <gasps> So that Benfi can prevail. <laughs> With these at the forefront, I am convinced that Zordlin will continue to be the greatest nation in the world. 
I invite every single one of you to celebrate our roots and our traditions at this holy bed fee festival. I hereby declare the festival open. Praise God, praise Sorland, praise Ben Fee. Still not done. Amor Navis Core. Vector and Sisda. Most of the people in the hall finish the decades old saying, including me. Monica's lips moved, but she didn't say the words out loud. He exited the stage as the band struck up the official uh, festival anthem. I spent the rest of the evening alternating watching the festivities and conversing with local politicians. By the time we got back to the hotel, I was exhausted. But. Thanks to the festival's festivities still raging outside, and the sound of Monica tossing and turning beside me, I couldn't sleep at all. Alright, gosh, that guy just went on and on. What a gas bag. Villain deploying special troops to Vernon. Yeah, that's, uh... He's preparing for the genocide. He wants me to help him. It ain't gonna happen. Alright, well, anyway... Less day is behind us. Now we're going to have some downtime at home. Downtime at home? Hmm. I don't remember what this event is. Uh, but we'll, we'll figure it out. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. And then um, I thought we were going to be negotiating with the, uh, the other parties. Like, I don't know. Maybe we're not... Oh, man, I wonder if it's like we're not going to negotiate with... Yeah, we're probably not even going to negotiate with the reformists because there's nothing I'm doing that they like. I could have sworn that, like, you meet everybody back to back. But if that's the case, that's 70 votes we just kissed goodbye to. But we are going to need the NFP, I think. Shoot. We'll figure it out. I'm conquering history games. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Gosh, I always have trouble getting out of the window so I can end the episode. There we go. Bye-bye.